G'day, Justin Hogg here from RideSource. So you've decided you want to start a not-for-profit. Well, what we're going to do over the next four videos is basically take you through some of the key things you need to think of when you're starting up a not-for-profit and basically help you work through that process. So you've got someone alongside you, you can sort of understand the process and also give you a few tips and a few uh, insights into why certain things need to be done when you're setting up your not-for-profit. So we structured these videos into a series of four, as I said. Um, the first one is a bit of an overview in terms of setting up a not-for-profit and setting up a business generally. The other three we've got are uh, talking about the registration process with the ACNC, which is the Australian Charities and Not-for-Profit Commission. Um, also then talking about governance and your board. And lastly, talking about the ATO and the tax opportunities or concessions that are available for not-for-profits. So that's what we're going to do. So first of all, we'll start off with an overview of Basically, you're looking to start a not-for-profit, what do you need to look at? Right off the bat, the first thing, and this is the first thing when you're starting any business, whether it be a not-for-profit or for-profit business, is why. What are you doing? So, really want to understand what the purpose is that you're trying to achieve. So, you want to get this very clear, because this will come through in a number of different aspects through the setup process and then ongoing through running your not-for-profit. It's all about the purpose. So you want to get really crystal clear on what this purpose is. The other reason with the purpose that's important to have it clear is, as a not-for-profit, you can't set that up as an individual. So as a single person, you can't do it on your own. You just, it's not able to be done. So what you want to be able to do is obviously set this up with a group of people. If you're setting up with a group of people, you want to be clear that everyone's doing it for the same reason, for the same purpose. So that's part of the reason as well to be very clear on the why you're doing this to get that purpose clear because you want to be able to communicate that with others that you're setting this um, not-for-profit up with and then also use it to share that with the wider community community um, people you're going with for grants everyone who's engaged with the not-for-profit wants to be clear on what the purpose of that not-for-profit not is so that is the first step whenever setting up a not-for-profit understand your purpose and get that down crystal clear the next thing that you roll into with that is once you understand, well, why am I setting this not-for-profit up? Why are we doing what we're doing? Is then to actually form a plan. Now, whether you want to call this a business plan or a strategic plan or a business overview, whatever you call it, really it's then going, okay, well, this is our purpose. Let's understand what it is that if we achieve that purpose, what, is, what does that look like? So what does success look like? What does achieving our purpose look like? So that then comes down to really getting some measures down in terms of the purpose you're looking to achieve. So your strategic objectives are, might be you know, setting up and running a homeless shelter. It might be providing service to those with a specific disability. It might be helping uh, those with a reading disability learn. What is it that you're looking to do in terms of that objective? And then once you understand that objective that your organization is doing, which is similar to the purpose, but it's just sort of measuring a bit more, also then understand, well, what resources is that going to take? So your strategic objective is X. Well, okay, now what to achieve that objective, what, what resources am I going to need in terms of people, in terms of funding? Uh, and is it an ongoing? So what time period as well? Because sometimes there might be a short term need that's fixed or it might be a longer term period that you're looking to fix. Start with the purpose and we've done the strategic plan. That then now leads into getting, again, another level of detail down and starting to understand the budget or the financial model. So you're really getting down now into, well, we understand what we're trying to achieve, what we're gonna to need to do to achieve that. Now, well, how much is that all gonna cost? And are we able to fund it? Are we able to manage it? And really getting down into the detail in terms of in terms of that financial model or, or budget so you can actually understand when you get down to it what how much funds are you going to need and with that also is well how are you going to achieve the, that fundraising is it going to be through I mean, do you have people who are willing to donate or who are already interested in the cause who want to put some funds in is it that you're going to be operating a fee-for-service model so that even though your goal is or your purpose is still um, a not-for-profit purpose and you're still acting in that way, but you can still be charging your clients. I mean, NDIS is a perfect example of that where 
there's a lot of clients that are getting charged for a service, but the ultimate provider is doing it on a not-for-profit basis, which just means that they're, they're putting more funds back into their purpose. So understanding that, that actual operating budget and how that's going to look is really important. And ultimately out of that, what you should be looking to understand is, is the whole concept that you've got sustainable? Because same as any business that you're starting up, if you're setting it up in a way that ultimately you're not going to get enough money in to, to pay for your costs, the business isn't sustainable. And no matter how just your cause and how noble your cause is, if you run out of cash, if you don't have any funds, you're not going to be able to do anything. So you really want to make sure your business is sustainable before you go too much further down the path in terms of registration processes and those type of things. So really a lot of what we've covered so far, like any business when you're starting it up, is that planning process and understanding, well, will this actually work? And is there a need? And that's probably the next part when you start looking at, you've gone through that internal looking of, well, this is the purpose, this is the objective, this is what I think it's gonna to need to cost. Another thing you need to overlay over that is, well, is there anyone else that doing this? Because the not-for-profit sector in Australia has 70,000 participants. Um, and that they're all, you can look all them up on the ACNC site. Um, they're all um, freely available to understand what they're doing and, and what areas they're working in. So another part of understanding this whole business purpose and your strategy is, well, is someone else already doing this? Or are there competitors that will be coming into in the market that will make it a lot harder for me to operate? So as much as I've got this good idea, if people are already doing it, is it going to prevent me from being successful? It's an important part of any time you start a business to think about sustainability, to also think about not only what you're doing, but also what others are doing. So through this whole process, we've gone internally, what you're looking to do, and then externally, what are others doing, and making sure that there's room for you in the market to participate. So once you've gone through that process and you sort of planned out what it is you're doing, and you've got a clear picture on that, then you can really start looking at, well, how are you gonna run this thing? So the administrative side or the finance side of things, which is things like, you know, making sure you understand what accounting system or software you're gonna use, because uh, part of running a not-for-profit, you need to make sure you maintain books, that's a requirement for your registration process. So you wanna make sure you have that worked out from day dot and you're not unclear about how you're gonna keep your financial records. And similarly, this is now the point where you wanna look at doing your registrations. So starting the registration process, the ACNC. So now you're clear on, on what it is. You wanna start going through the ACNC process on registering, um, which there's a whole nother video on that because there's a few a number of steps to go through with that. So I'll take you through that in detail, but that's obviously now there's a point in this process where you go to the ACNC and also start thinking about the board or the governance procedures that you want to have in your organization, which again, that's pretty involved, so we're going to cover that in another video, but really that's making sure you've got all those internal workings in place so you know how your organization is going to run. And then also with fundraising, if you are going to do fundraising, making sure again that you're aware of the licensing requirements for that. Now that's particular to, that's a state requirement quite often in terms of the registration process. So each state in Australia will have a different process you need to go through in terms of registering to do fundraising. Um, so obviously look at that and make sure that's a step that you look at in terms of if you are going to look for donations on your website or anything like that. And quite often that comes after you've done the ACNC process because they want to make sure that you're a registered charity, but it can be looked at at the same time. So this is now the time to start looking at that process as well. So that admin side, is then really the side you need to start getting in place and those registrations because they can take a little while to get through um, and not necessarily as simple as you might think. So then after the, the admin side, there's two other things that, um, one that's uh, similar to all businesses and then another which is peculiar to not-for-profits I wanna talk about. The first, well, I suppose the, the first thing then is your exit strategy. So it sounds a bit odd when you're setting up a not-for-profit, it's like, well, do you have an exit strategy? Well, there's two reasons you should have an exit strategy when starting a not-for-profit. One, the first reason is not-for-profit might not succeed. You're trying to potentially start a business that is break-even at best, um, trying to use all the funds that you receive into a cause and a purpose. Now, that can quite often not get all the funding in that you need and not allow you to deliver the purpose. So effectively, 
a lot of not-for-profits do fail because they're trying to run such a fine line. And failing or, or business failing isn't necessarily a bad thing. And similar with the not-for-profit, it's not about um, it's not about preventing or necessarily being afraid of failing. Like failing can happen. What you want to be is prepared for it, so that if it's not things aren't going well, you can exit gracefully and close that business down and, and move on to the next thing. And quite often, your first go might not work. That's okay. If you if you make sure that you exit gracefully, you can have another crack. It's not the end of the world. It's you'll learn something from that, and then you'll be able to apply that in your next attempt. The second reason you want an exit strategy from a not-for-profit is, again, it comes back to the purpose. The purpose, it's not about you. It's about the purpose. So you want the not-for-profit to continue, to continue to meet its purpose after you've gone. So you want to be able to have a process in place or be aware of a process being in place so that eventually when you do want to move on from the not-for-profit, that it's able to continue without you being there. And that's really important um, because you want the purpose to be fulfilled. And that leads on to um, one of the areas I want to talk about that's really interesting and can happen in not-for-profit space that I think everyone should be just a little bit aware of. It's not necessarily a bad thing. Um, and it's where the not-for-profit becomes all about the founder. Now, uh, some people call it the founder syndrome or effectively it's your not-for-profit and it continues to be that. So it's almost as important as the purpose becomes the fact that you're there. It's you that is driving this purpose and it becomes intertwined. Now, as I said, this isn't necessarily a bad thing because there's definitely not-for-profits that have this characteristic where it is all about the founder, that achieving amazing things and, and really fixing or, or helping to fix the purpose that they're, they're looking to do. The downside of it can be that because it becomes a little centered around one person, it means you may lose opportunities, you may not be as open to different partnerships that might be there, and eff effectively it can limit the scope you may have in terms of achieve, achieving your purpose. And again, when that individual does look to leave, it can actually cause a lot of damage to the not-for-profit and effectively make it cease because it's so intertwined with the one person. When that one person leaves, the not-for-profit ceases to be able to function. So that's something very important to look at. And I think to be conscious of as you're moving towards setting up your not-for-profit, is it a not-for-profit you're setting up about you or is it about the purpose? That was our first video in our series of four talking about setting up a not-for-profit. And really today was just about, really about that planning process and understanding what you need to go through in terms of setting up that not-for-profit. What we're gonna look at in future weeks is the ACNC registration process, governance processes for your not-for-profit, and then lastly, looking at your taxes and ATO registrations. If you are looking to set up a not-for-profit, one other thing I would add to all this is, you know, get some help or, or there's a lot of great resources online and there are a lot of um, professional services out there who are more than happy to help you set up your not-for-profit. Uh, RightSource definitely is one of those and we work with a lot of individuals to help set up their not-for-profit and set it up in a way that really looks to achieve their purpose and gives them every chance of success. So if you are interested in more information in terms of setting up your not-for-profit, definitely feel free to reach out. We'll put a comment in below. If you've got a question, happy to answer that and share that with everyone else who might be watching these videos. Feel free to subscribe. As I said, there's other videos looking specifically at setting up a not-for-profit, but also other challenges that you might experience during that not-for-profit journey and where you are going through that everyone else might be able to benefit from. Otherwise, that's it for this week's video. Thanks for watching, and it's Justin Hogg from RightSource.